In this video, we'll be looking at the uh, content type of assessment in ANGEL. If you've been using ANGEL for a while, you're probably familiar with the quiz. The assessment is new in version 7.2, and by 7.4, we'll have com uh, completely replaced the quiz content type. For now, you can either convert your quizzes to assessments, keep your quizzes, or just start fresh with a new assessment. And that's what we're going to do today. So I've gone to the lessons area and add content and added an assessment. Uh, assessments, before I can start adding questions to them, I need to set settings for them, such as the title of the assessment and how it's going to be displayed for the user when they click into it. Do I want it to open in the same window or a new window? The other settings I have across the top, access settings are who and when can open the assessment. So I might want it to be viewable only by people with a certain role, like team leader or student, or accessible by a certain team, or have stop and start dates that uh, becomes uh, you can open it on this date and, and not see it again on a certain date. Um, I can also set security settings. If I leave it as none, or I can change it to medium, medium will disable right click and print a few things like that to make it harder for people to cheat. And if you use the uh, high setting, then the quiz is only accessible from somebody using the Angel Secure Browser, which is a web browser provided by Angel that we can install in proctoring centers and other places like that, but that hopefully people will not have at their home. Right? The interaction tab is new to assessments. We didn't have that with quizzes. And the, so the date that something is accessible and the date that it is deliverable are different. With an access date, this is when the students or users will start to see that listed in the lesson content. An interaction date is when they can start to open it or take it. So they might want them to be able to see it but not be able to take it. And also set within how people interact with the quiz. You can set the order of the questions, the order of the question sets, which are subsets of the questions. Um, you can uh, change the mastery setting so somebody can take it, uh, keep taking the assessment until they get to a certain percent, say, or allow a certain number of attempts. Um, you can set a time limit for how long a person has to take it before it automatically submits or discloses. Review happens after the person has taken the assessment, so this is when you're going to give feedback or let people see right and wrong. Uh, answer key, that sort of thing. So you have different choices for what feedback people get in review, uh, what type of review they can have, or uh, also when the review becomes available. So you might want it to say, yes, they can review it, but only a certain number of days after uh, the assessment is disabled and people cannot take it again. The Automate tab, if, if you're unfamiliar with automation, watch the videos in this course to do with uh, agents and actions, but this is a way to have things automatically happen, like passing this quiz gets you onto a certain team, or failing this quiz has an email sent to the tutoring center saying you'll be coming in for tutoring, or something like that. And then the, as the assignment settings uh, let you control milestone and gradebook settings, which we'll also cover in another video. So at a minimum, I want to give the assessment a name and hit save. And now I'm in the assessment. I can see I'm in the lessons area in sample assessment. And I can now start to add question sets. In the past, if you've used quizzes and you used uh, section headers to divide your, your questions into separate uh, sections, this is similar. You'll have a set now. So I, can, I start with one. I've got one question set to, uh, to start with by default, but I could add another one. Or I could start to add questions to the current question set. And I have uh, the, sort, the sorts of choices you might expect, true, false, multiple choice, answer, uh, essay. The, some of these can be automatically graded, and some of them have to be manually graded. So I could have the student take a test containing true, false, multiple choice, and essay. And when they get done, it might say, I might have the setting set to, you got these ones right and these ones wrong. You'll get your overall grade once the instructor has manually graded the essay question. 
One thing that's new that we did not have in quizzes is the algorithmic question. And this is going to let me specify a uh, value range for a variable in a mathematic formula so that each time the student takes each time a student takes the assessment they'll get essentially a different question where the the values in the question are generated from the ranges of the variables I can also so I can create these new questions I can also copy questions from the question pool or from another assessment I can browse the question bank. The question bank is also new to Angel, and this is every every assessment in your course, the qu questions that you put into it get added to the question bank, and you can manage that from the Manage tab. So for now, I'll just choose a true-false question, and I can give it, uh, it's going to be worth a certain number of points. Question text, question text and question title are two different things. Yeah, I'll give it a question. I'll give it the. Um, I'll get, I can give feedback for if somebody's gotten it correct or gotten it incorrect. This is what they'll see at the end. I can also give it keywords. The nice thing about keywords is that if you assign if you assign keywords or difficulty, then later when you're wanting to pull questions out of the question bank, you can do it by keyword. So especially if you're using you're going to be reusing the questions on a final, maybe um, you know you're going to do a review uh, assessment that pulls a certain number of questions, you can do that based on keywords. And I can uh, save it, which it, it will be added to the question bank there, or I can hit save and then go right back into the true-false question editor and start another one. So now I'm just going to hit save. And now I have a an assessment with one question set with one question in it. And I can see the um, information about this at a glance, how many of each type of question, how many points are in it, uh, all the information sort of a top level view in the uh, at a glance features here. Now that I've created the assessment I might want to see what it looks like to the student. To do that I could click preview and when it comes up I can see that it is a one question. Same it, close my preview there. I also have for the assessment utilities and reports and to save time, I will invite you to look at those on your own. Uh, probably the utility that you'll use the most is the view, grade, and delete submissions. And you'll also look for pending items when somebody has um, been into a quiz and then not been able to submit it. Maybe their computer shut down, something like that. Uh, lots of other ones here. Again, just take a look at those. And under the reports, you can see basically who's done what. You can also look at uh, questions to see if, if you know everybody's missing a certain a lot of people are missing a certain question you might want to go in and um, and change that and regrade submissions that sort of thing and that is it